Hey guys, so this is a video I wanted to make for a long time and I'm going to finally reveal the biggest secret there is in tennis. And specifically, I'm talking about the big three, Djokovic, Nadal and Federer. There's got to be some kind of secret that these guys have that nobody else knows about. And I know exactly what the secret is and this is what I'm going to reveal in today's video. Okay guys, are you ready for the big secret? Here it is. There is no secret when it comes to becoming a high-level player and this is also the case for the big three. They did not do anything different than all the other high-level players around the globe. So you're probably thinking, Nick, you must be crazy. These guys are so much better than everybody else. They must be doing something different. There must be some kind of secret that they're holding super tight and not letting anybody know about it. But I'm here to tell you that they're not. There are no secrets when it comes to becoming a high level tennis player and this is also the case for the big three so let me get into what a high level tennis player is so on the ATP rankings we have 1723 players ranked on the ATP so the last guys that are ranked they only have one ATP point on the women's tour it's 1342 players and they actually have three points on the very bottom of those rankings so those are about 3,000 players and you can consider those high level players the ones that you see on tv i call those the elite players this is the top of the list they're the best players in the world we know them by name but there's also a lot of other players on that ranking that if you saw them play they don't necessarily look any worse than the players you see on tv there's very little difference and let's say between somebody that's ranked 500 and somebody that's ranked 100 and i'm not the only one saying this if you read the rafael nadal autobiography he said that if you put two players next to each other, himself and a guy ranked 500, if you didn't know which player was Nadal, if you didn't know anything about him, you would not be able to tell the difference who's number one in the world and who's number 500 in the world, simply looking at their strokes. And you have to have that level of tennis, even if you want to make a few bucks in prize money. So we already talked about how many players are ranked. It's about 3,000 players. And I would probably add another couple of thousand players who are of that similar level who are just maybe competing in the European club system they're playing prize money tournaments so we can say that about 5,000 players internationally have this high level of play so how do you reach this high level of play well there's absolutely no secret about it everybody does it the same way you have to play tennis as a little kid start as young as possible and basically invest your whole life into tennis which means sacrificing your social life sometimes even sacrificing school and basically the only thing you're going to be doing from early age is playing tennis every single day so you must be asking yourself how come there are only 5,000 tennis players when there are so many juniors trying to become a high level player how come there's only so very few well this is where the tennis pizza comes into play and guys this is the tennis pizza and consists of 10 slices it consists of eight smaller ones and two big ones so there's two slices of this tennis pizza that a high level player must possess or there's absolutely no chance to compete at that higher level and then these eight slices have to be there but they're smaller components of a player's game so we're going to start off with the first slice which is a player's technique that's pretty good pizza actually so the first slice of the pizza is technique and this is what every high level player must possess if they want to be at that level and I'll just give you a few examples so we will not find a high level player who doesn't have a wrist lag for example which is a direct result of the correct fundamentals and stroke acceleration the same goes for pronation into contact uh, you will also not see a high level player have fundamental flaws in their technique such as a forehand grip on the serve etc and there are many other examples of uh, what the correct technique is and you can watch uh, some of the other technical videos on my channel to find out what those are all right slice number two is speed so players must have speed if they want to compete at the high level and they don't necessarily have to be super fast as speed could also be footwork yes there's a difference between footwork and speed but you must have speed when you're setting up the ball or there's absolutely no chance to compete at that level the next three slices i'm going to list together so it's agility coordination and reflexes this is something that you must have now some players have more of it than others and this is why these slices 
are a little bit smaller. You can have a little bit less of one and a little bit more of the other, but generally speaking, you must possess uh, these three elements if you want to compete at the high level. Oh, I'm starting to get full. The next slice is endurance. And this is something that's quite unique about tennis, that some matches at the elite level where they play best of five, as you guys know, can last in one instance 11 hours but even at the smaller levels where they play a best of three matches can last three and a half four hours and now the crazy thing about tennis what makes it different from any other sport is that for example at the low level you might play a three hour match and then get a two hour break and then play another one so if you don't have endurance you're not going to be able to last at the high level oh man i'm really getting full now from this but we got to press on so on to number seven uh, which is focus and uh, this is what separates tennis from other sports where people have to be quiet in the stands and this is for a very specific reason because tennis players have to be able to focus they have to be able to concentrate and if you don't have this focus if you're unable to concentrate on each individual point you have very little chance to play at the high level and on to the next tennis pizza slice and it's kind of ironic since i'm eating a pizza but it's discipline. Tennis players have to be incredibly disciplined when it comes to their diet, their lifestyle, and the amount of sleep they get, for example. So they can't be going out partying and drinking and eating a bad diet. They have to be very disciplined. And uh, the thing is, if you're not disciplined and all the other players who are competing against you are, they're gonna have an advantage of you. So this is something that you must absolutely have if you wanna compete at the high level. All right, guys, we're nearing the end and I'm getting really full, but I'm gonna power through. Number nine is the ability to handle pressure. This is something that makes tennis different from other sports. And because the way the tennis scoring system works, every single game can have a lot of pressure. And not only that, but also you can play against certain opponents uh, that you're gonna feel this pressure. And if you can't handle it, if it's something that you can't stand up to, this consistent pressure, then you have no chance to compete at the high level. Some players who are very good are scared of this pressure and therefore refuse to compete. So you must be able to fight this pressure and have the ability to handle it if you wanna have a chance to compete at the high level. All right, guys. And the last thing that you need, the last tennis pizza slice, is the will to win and it's true some players have this more than others but you need to have the will to win the ability to overcome adversity when you're not feeling well when you feel like you want to throw in the towel and quit something inside of you has to be pushing you and if you don't have that you're going to have very little chance to compete at the high level and now i'm going to get into why the big three nadal djokovic and federer are so much better than everybody else in the shattering all the tennis records and I'm gonna leave the 10 things that a high-level tennis player needs to have in order to compete at that level on the screen so you can see it so those three guys they're the absolute best of all time in each one of those categories that's what makes them better than everybody else so I'm just gonna give you one example of a fantastic player who also has all these 10 things John Isner but unfortunately John probably has less speed, agility, and coordination compared to the big three. So there's absolutely no way that he can match the results of the other three guys. And how does any high level player acquire these 10 things? Well, some of these things are gonna be genetic. So they're gonna be given to you at birth and some other things are gonna be learned. So for whatever reason, whether it's just genetic or it's the fact that the big three have worked harder than everybody else that's what sets them apart from all the other players in the history of the game it's important to remember that it's very rare to see athletes like this in my opinion we will not see players like Nadal Federer and Djokovic for a very very long time and why do I say that because it's almost impossible to have a player who is the absolute best at each one of those 10 categories that are listed before so how does this topic relate to the recreational level actually I didn't make this video for high level players, I made this video for the recreational level for you guys because I want you to get value out of it. Now, if you clicked on the thumbnail, which was obviously sarcastic, knowing that I was joking around, you're fine. But I'm sure there's some people who are out there hunting for seekers, they're hunting for that fast improvement and I'm here to give you some valuable advice. When it comes to tennis improvement, there is no fast improvement. In fact, tennis improvement is so slow and gradual that you're gonna feel like you're not getting better at all. 
I get a lot of players who come to me who say, I'm stagnated in my level, I'm just not getting better. And I tell them, you have gotten a lot better, you're just not feeling it because the process takes time. It's very gradual. The only people who can see the improvement are maybe players who haven't seen you play for a while and they say, wow, you've gotten a lot better and then you get surprised, you get the positive feedback and you keep playing. So be aware that tennis improvement takes time. At the high level, as I previously mentioned, it takes a lifetime of dedication and sacrifice to become a high level player. Now, of course, at the recreational level, we're talking about a different thing. You guys are playing recreationally for fun. It's a leisurely activity and you can't play every day for three, four, five hours. Of course you can't. You have a job, you have other responsibilities. But I'm here to tell you that if you're looking for the quick fix, if you're looking for the easy way out, if you're looking for those secrets, they are none. The only thing that you can do to get better is get the repetitions in. Play as often as you can and that is the only way that you can become a better tennis player. And speaking of reps, guys, I practice what I preach. I'm here to get those reps in. And I also have to work off that pizza. And I actually didn't eat the pizza, I'll be honest with you guys. I gave it away to a couple of hungry tennis players. But look, this is what I've been doing my whole life, hitting tennis balls. And I wanna repeat one more time. The only way you can get better, if you do this as much as possible, hit the tennis ball. Ah!